Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and today we're going to do our first autumn and winter look ahead with even some models starting to look into 2024. Now this time of the year for the last few years we have started to do our look heads looking at all the different seasonal forecasts so if you're looking for what's going to be happening day to day we are not going to have any clue for at least a few months especially for winter but we're able to have a look at the probabilities of what could be happening in the winter and what sort of biases we could be seeing with different climate drivers so in this first look ahead we're really only going to be able to have a look at some of the really sort of big climate drivers which are pretty much bang on now for the next few months uh, in general so we have a look at the enso region which has made some headlines in the news especially when we're talking about climate change um it's made a lot of headlines but i'll be focusing on what effects that could have on our winter also be looking at the polar vortex where uh, where we're starting to see some of the forecasts for uh, late autumn and early winter starting to appear now. We'll also have a look at some of the monthly seasonable charts now, which are starting to show uh, early uh, early winter into December and some into 2024. So I must remember that these very much are just trends um, and probabilities. There is nothing guaranteed from looking at these charts. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, which do like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in description. To start by having a look at what is going on in ENSO. So this is the, the Nino, El Nino phases, where we do have sea surface temperatures uh, either neutral, so zero degrees compared to average, above average or below average. And we sort of oscillate between above average and below average every six, six to 12 months, sometimes even longer. Now, different events uh, will change global weather patterns or can affect global weather patterns. Now, some of you will know this, some of you know, will not, but the ENSO region we look at for global weather patterns is out in the Pacific. So it's thousands of miles away from the UK. So there is sometimes talk about you know, La Nino or El Nino is going to cause this in the UK. There is links, definite links. But the problem we've got is we're so far away that it very much is a chain reaction. And if part of the chain, you know, a thousand miles away, doesn't quite move as expected, then things can change quite drastically for the UK. So these El, uh, El Nino, La Nina favorite phases are much better predictors for weather in and around the Pacific areas. North America, Asia, Africa, uh, even getting to Africa, uh, but uh, less so the UK. But there are, as I said, still some trends. Now, the reason why it's been making the rounds in the news recently is because we're going into the warm phase. We're going into the El Nino phase. Now, you can see at the moment I've got the sea surface temperature anomalies as of the 24th of August here. And you can see a lot of orange and reds appearing. So we've actually got really quite warm oceans at the moment compared to average. Most uh, of our oceans are around 1 to 2 degrees above average, especially in the northern hemisphere. Uh, again, it's expected to be warm. It is summer in the northern hemisphere sphere but it is particularly warm this year and that's why again there have been rumblings about an enhanced hurricane season which we are starting to see take off at the moment but if you do concentrate on the enso region it is right along the equator coming out of south america and going westwards towards the mid pacific now you can see here there's a stretch of darker reds and this is where we're looking in the Enso region. It's a very large area and sometimes looks can be deceiving because it may only be very much uh, surface heating um, or it could be quite uh, heating to quite a depth. But at the moment we are in an El Nino phase and we are going to continue in an El Nino phase and it could even strengthen and you can see that from these positive temperature anomalies. If we're in a La Nina phase you see some of these blues we're seeing in the southern ocean develop uh it develop in this area here so you can see from the map we're in an el nino phase and if we do go over to the met office website they have even a chart here showing that we're in about one to maybe 1.5 degrees uh, above normal above sort of neutral and about 0.5 
is the category for uh, for uh, for El Nino or El Nino, depending positive or negative. You can see here most of the ensembles from the Nino model is producing temperature anomalies up to two degrees of so a very strong El Nino. We could also have a look over at NOAA. Another way of representing this is by having a look at the three month spread. This is July, August, September, August, September, October, September, October, November, and onwards going all the way to March, April, May. And you see the probability of it being uh, El Nino is pretty much high 90s, if not 100% over the next six months or so, even longer. And you can see the probabilities decrease on the temperature anomaly for the next month or so, about an 83% chance it is a one degree or above, about a 20% chance it's 1.5 degrees above, but you can see those probabilities of it being above 1.5 degrees increased and peaks during the late autumn and early winter. Just in, just showing you that it, there is a, a very good chance this, uh, this El Nino phase is going to strengthen and become extremely strong. But we're just looking at something that's happening thousands of miles away. What effects would it actually have on our weather? As I said, there are indirect links. It's a chain reaction. But on the Met Office website, you can see there is very good data here uh, going through uh, the different phases. You can see here over the last uh, 50, 60 odd years, you can see the up and down phases, some very strong La Ninas and El Ninos. And you can see we're going into uh, a positive uh, El Nino phase. And you see the last few years, last five years or so, we've been very much in La Nina, on and off La Nina, so very long La Nina phase. We're now going into El Nino. But if we go to the bottom, you can see this is a very generalized chart. Remember that the links, especially in Europe and towards the Northern Hemisphere, is weaker than the Southern Hemisphere and parts of South America, North America, and parts of Asia. So you can see here for Europe and much of uh, the UK, the, the, the links are pretty weak. But you can see here for El Nino, the tendency in from August to November, so through the autumn period, is for wetter conditions across southern Europe. What we'd infer from that is the jet stream is slightly further southwards. Now that's something to remember when we're looking at some of the seasonal charts in the second half of the video. The jet stream in a El Nino phase would tend to be further southwards than in a neutral phase. If you have a look at the temperature, you can see for southern Europe, through the autumn, you'd expect it to be warmer. That's what you'd expect with a southerly tracking jet. You'd expect southern Europe to be getting a lot of warm air piped up from the mid-Atlantic. But you can see, interestingly, up towards Scandinavia, January, February, we have colder tendencies. Again, implying northern blocking, jet stream to the south, cold air coming out of the Arctic. We can see in brackets here, not strong events. So you can see if it gets too strong, then obviously the chain reaction changes a little bit and we see slightly different outcomes. So it is a very, very difficult thing to link together and it is only a uh, tendency. There is no, uh, there's no absolute science, so absolute, definitely gonna happen. It's very much, uh, very much statistical links we're seeing here. So in a fairly moderate El Nino, which we are in at the moment, could get stronger, but again, doesn't we don't know exactly how strong it will get. This would imply that through early, early next year, uh, if we keep this El Nino around, which is highly likely, we'd be seeing potentially some colder weather across much of Northern Europe, or well, that would be the trends. So very interesting seeing that. Again, doesn't necessarily mean there's definitely going to be a cold winter. Definitely doesn't definitely mean it's cold early in the year, or that southern Europe is going to be very wet through the autumn. But that's what generally we'd expect, or we'd sort of sway to. They'll be biased towards in the coming months. Now another factor that we have to look at in a long range is the polar vortex, and this has got a much stronger link to. British weather and European weather in terms of colder and warmer weather and stormy weather as well. Again, we've had a look at this in a lot of detail over the past few years and our look aheads. And generally, it is correct. When we see a very strong polar vortex, we generally see milder stormy conditions. And when we see a very weak polar vortex or weak zonal winds here from this chart, 
we'd see cooler, more blocked and drier weather. Now you can see here the polar vortex is now forming. You know, in the next week or two, we're going to go into positive territory for the zonal wind winds, i.e., they are going to a westerly phase. So that low pressure higher up in the atmosphere at 10 HPA is forming and is going to start to spin up those westerly winds that generally peak in early January. Now you can see here we've got the red dotted line, that's the analysis of last year, and you can see we actually saw a fairly strong polar vortex through much of early winter. We did see cold weather in early, January, early December, so it doesn't necessarily uh, mean, as one thing doesn't force the other, but it could encourage uh, cold weather or mild weather, depending on what is going on. But you can see just before early December, there was a little bit of a dip so that could have favoured that colder spell that we did see in December last year. But we saw a very cold autumn or very cold, uh, sorry, very cold spring, or at least cold periods, especially in March, we saw very heavy snowfall in some areas, a suddenly tracking jet. Again, that could be linked to these events here, sudden stratospheric warmings we saw. Again, they didn't make too much hype because they did happen quite late in the season, probably a few weeks too late to create anything too major in terms of wintry weather, but they did occur. And you can, so you can see the links that we can infer from them. But you can see the latest CFS run. We've got a bias and an un, uh, we've got a bias corrected and uncorrected, uh, as the CFS has a bias sometimes associated with it. But you can see both both of this, both corrected and gotten corrected, are going for a weak polar vortex through much of November. So again, that could imply that there's a above average chance of more blocking, slower jet stream. Southerly tracking jet, more amplification, and generally not a strong westerly stormy pattern. Again, just bias here, just potential, but signs that early winter, again, if this comes off, could have an above average chance of colder periods or generally colder weather. So we looked at both the Enso region and the uh, polar vortex, which don't, both do have some signs of a colder winter or colder uh, colder periods at winter at, at least giving chance uh, giving chances there uh, again some people watching this will probably say you know it's a good few months away uh, we can't really infer much at this stage but if it was on the other shoe if we were seeing patterns in the end so that would suggest much milder wetter weather and we've seen very powerful polar vortex forecast here then we'd probably say yeah, no chance of anything cold in at least the first half of winter. But we're seeing the opposite here. So there is potential. Uh, but of course, as I said at the start of the video, we will have no clue really until we get into November time when we start to see some of the longer range charts uh, or mid to long range charts starting to tackle this. The last thing I want to do is have a look at the ECMWF and the UK Met Office seasonal runs for the next couple of months. Now this is from the ECMWF website uh, and this is the mean sea level pressure. So you'd expect for cold weather, you'd expect to see oranges or reds up towards Greenland, Iceland or Scandinavia and the blues across southern Europe. For milder, wet and windy weather, you'd expect blues up towards Greenland, Iceland, Scandinavia and oranges towards Central Atlantic and Southern Europe. That would imply a westerly flow. The other pattern, as I said, with high pressure further northwards, would imply more of an easterly or northerly flow. But we are looking at, looking at September here. We'll go all the way to November, which is getting towards the end of this time frame. Now, November here, you can see it is potentially quite blocked. A lot of oranges up towards Greenland and Iceland, up towards Svalbard, even into parts of uh, Scandinavia here and coming out of northeast Canada. Again, they are fairly light, so only a slight bias towards higher pressure. But you can see some stronger blues across southern Europe, potentially implying a southerly tracking jet. So you can see southern parts of the Britain are in the blues. So again, it could be one of those sort of battleground scenarios with high pressure to the north trying to pull in northerly or easterlies, trying to shove that jet southwards, but the strong jet trying to push it. It could be a bit of a battleground. That's what we are seeing from this November anomaly. If we move into December, we're getting further out, so the resolution does drop. But once again, lots of blues towards the central Atlantic area, out towards Eastern Europe, plenty of oranges over the Arctic and across Greenland, again, giving the risk of northeast or easterlies. Again, it's not a massive 
massive anomaly, it's not a massive overall push towards that, but definitely suggesting the risk is there. So we'd have to see what happens with that, um, but that would be definitely uh, suggesting uh, some perhaps more blocked colder weather. Again, if we saw this a month or two out, we saw these sort of charts in October, I think there would start to be a bit of hype around it. So we'll have to see. The other way to look at this is look at the precipitation. Uh, if we do skip to November, again, you can see lots of uh, lots of greens across southern Europe and the mid-Atlantic, more browns towards Greenland or southern Greenland, north Atlantic. Again, that would imply higher pressures position there, the jet stream further southwards. And if we have a look at December, similar pattern, more browns towards northern Europe, uh, northern Atlantic, up towards Iceland, with more greens across southern Europe. Does definitely just push into parts of southern Britain, but again, that could be low pressures pushing into more blocked patterns further north. It's a bit of a battleground, and we'll have to see with that. Now, finally, over to Meteo Seal, we'll have a look at uh, the Copernicus UK Met Office North Hemisphere model here. And again, if we skip to November, you can see not actually particularly encouraging for anything particularly cold. High pressure out to our east, low pressure coming in off, off the Atlantic. So this is completely opposite to the east on the left, just showing you that not all models do align. This would be a mild um, and fairly wet and windy pattern. Into December, though, things change. High pressure builds towards Scandinavia. Greenland, Iceland, low pressure to the south. So December, we'd be expecting easterly winds. Again, it's not a massive anomaly, but compared to much of the northern hemisphere, where we're not seeing much anomaly at all, this is pretty strong from this run. And finally, into January, similar pattern that high pressure is more out to the North Atlantic, so more encouraging northerly or northeasterly winds. So it's very interesting seeing all of these different charts here. There definitely will be models that I'm probably not looking at, uh, I don't have time to look at, which perhaps are like that UK Met Office uh, November part, uh, November, November chart showing more of a westerly flow. But we're definitely seeing good hints, strong hints, that there could be some cold weather coming up this winter. Again, uh, many people state this, that we are owed and due some pr a proper colder winter, proper below average temperatures for uh, for quite a period of time, not just a week or two, like we saw in December last year, or for a few days with a northerly blast, we are due proper sustained wintry and cold weather uh, at some point, it's just statistically it's going to happen. So perhaps we could see it this year, definitely our signs that the potential is here, and at least from the ENSO forecast and from the Polar Vortex forecast at the moment, it's not producing uh, something that would completely destroy any hopes of any wintry weather. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you do stay tuned. We'll probably have another update in the next few weeks. We'll be looking at this every few weeks and then as we head into the middle of autumn, probably more, uh, probably into uh, probably most weeks as we get more data and more charts get into the right time frame. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see how this does develop. And generally, we do sort of uh, create a bit of a narrative changing the story as things go on uh, as different uh, as different charts become available and we'll be seeing what sort of trends the models do have because one model can show basically cold easterly winds and it won't mean anything but if we see that consistently week on week and month on month then we'll be able to put a bit more weight on it and we'll have to see where we are in uh, it come uh, come about two or three months time into october november and then we'll start to have a much stronger idea but at the moment, some decent early hints if you are after some colder weather this winter. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.